Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are going to dive into one of my favorite series from American Horror Story which would be Freak Show. Uh, I really enjoyed this particular season. It was just very interesting and creepy and there was a lot of fun details that I really enjoyed about the series. Um, but I'm going to specifically talk about the character Pepper today and her history and how her character was developed and who she was based on in real life. Uh, before we get started, just quick disclaimer, I am not a diagnosing, treating practitioner, I am a nurse. Uh, the discussions that I have about treatment and therapies are just recommendations that are put forth by the medical community, not by me personally. Therefore, you cannot use the information that you find here to diagnose or treat any medical conditions if you do have questions about a specific medical condition, you should seek help from a specialist or a licensed provider. Okay? All right, let's get into it. So Pepper was a character played by Naomi Grossman, and this character was portrayed to have a condition known as microcephaly. Uh, in the show, she's often referred to as a pinhead, which is a slang term that was used in the carnival scene. Uh, as you can imagine, the freaks of the freak show in real life were not treated very well throughout this carnival circuit, so uh, the names were not always very nice. Uh, but we're going to just refer to her by her name, or when we talk about the real life person, by their name. So microcephaly is a condition where the brain does not fully develop so it is smaller in circumference than a normal baby, human baby brain. Um, it can be caused by a variety of reasons. Uh, it could be a genetic disorder. Uh, it could also be caused by drugs, alcohol, other toxins. Also could be caused by a few viruses. Some of those viruses include rubella, which can be vaccinated against. So get your vaccines. Also toxoplasmosis, which is a parasite and uh, cytomegalovirus, which is obviously a virus. Um, it can also be caused by malnutrition or some sort of loss of blood flow to the developing brain area, um, or if the uh, bones fuse prematurely, which may be caused by a genetic issue or something of that nature. There's about 200,000 cases in the United States every year, so technically rare. Uh, but 200,000 is still a big number, but technically it's considered a rare uh, condition. So at oftentimes it can be found via ultrasound while the mother is getting her prenatal checkups, uh, though sometimes it's diagnosed uh, once the baby is born. It can only be officially diagnosed when the baby is born, which you may get a uh, warning in the ultrasound images beforehand. Uh, there is no real treatment for this kind of condition. There's no way to cure it. There's no way to make the brain finish developing. Unfortunately, it is a lifelong disease and there are some complications that come along with it. Uh, so it can be a very mild case where there's not as many complications to a severe case that would have a lot of difficulties that come along with it. Uh, so let's get into some of those complications. So some complications include a developmental delay, um, short stature or dwarfism depending on their final height. Uh, they can also have seizures that come along with the uh, underdeveloped brain. They could also have difficulty with speech and coordination and be uh, intellectually disabled. And they can also be very hyperactive. So let's discuss the character in the show, uh, her name was Pepper. So in the show, she's portrayed as very sweet and kind. She takes care of uh, Ma Petite, and um, she's just all over, overall very loving and very sweet and very childlike. Um, Naomi did a wonderful job portraying her, and I think she really captured the essence of this person. So whom they were portraying in real life was actually a man. And the man that she was portraying in the show was known as Schlitzie Sertris. The speculation is that that person was born as Simon Metz on September 10th of 1901. 
Um, they don't really have an official birth record and they aren't really 100% sure that that's him. Obviously he has no way of knowing that either. Uh, but that's what they were kind of going with and that's been generally accepted. Um, so, he, so there's no information on what happened to him at birth, how he ended up in the carnival life necessarily, but if I had to speculate, this is just me speculating, this is not fact, um, the poor mother was probably distraught, there wasn't a lot of information or help in 1901 uh, on how to care for this child. I'm sure a lot of children with disabilities were not well cared for because there just wasn't a lot of research, resources, knowledge, a lot of stigma, a lot of those things that contributed negatively to their overall treatment. So I think she may have thought that the carnival life would give her son a chance at having a life and having a community of people who would accept him. Also, there's a good way to make a lot of money in that area. Although it is known that a lot of the performers who were not um, fully developed intellectually were often taken advantage of and not paid their full wages. I did not find any evidence of that necessarily in my research. I'm sure it happened. He had the, we'll get into his details. Um, but he, from all accounts, he was a very sweet and loving person, enjoyed performing, enjoyed singing, enjoyed uh, performing for other people, making them laugh, making them smile. So he seemed like he was just a performer at heart always. So when he was fully grown, he was about four feet tall, had the mentality of about three years old, uh, which is why I think he was probably taken advantage of at some point in his life. He would usually speak in the short words or short phrases. Um, he was able to perform simple tasks and he mostly did a lot of mimicking um, and he did really love performing for other people. Um, he was in a few movies as well, which I'll get into later but he was in a lot of skits that portrayed him as like the missing link between like humans and apes, which is horrible. Um, also just called a pinhead in general, also horrible. Um, he's also known as one of the, the last Aztec people. I don't know where that uh, sprouted from, but, um, and he was often used um, interchangeably his gender. They often referred to him as male or female, depending on the role. He wore like, just like long dresses and didn't really wear like specific men or women clothing. Um, I read somewhere that the long dress, the moo moo type of thing was um, due to his incontinence. Although you could potty train a three year old, although I don't know if anybody ever took the time to do that. So he was, may have been incontinent having to wear special briefs so it's a lot easier to change them if they were in a gown versus pants. Uh, so I can understand that I guess. But uh, he didn't really have a lot of autonomy in that uh, way as far as what he was referred to. Um, considering his was born, potentially was born Simon and his name was changed to Schlutzi at some point. Throughout his life he really didn't probably get to choose that either. So considering that his uh, birth story is really unknown, he did go through multiple, multiple different guardianships depending on which carnival he was performing at. And he did perform at many, many carnivals, uh, the big ones being Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey. He also performed for a few other small ones, Clayton Beatty Circus, Tom Mix Circus, Crafts 20 Big Shows, and Foley and Burke Carnival. The few movies that he was in um, did not really portray him in such a great light. Uh, it was that time, I guess, uh, 1920s and 30s. So he was in, you'll see by the titles, he was in the movie The Sideshow, 1928, Freaks, 1932, uh, Tomorrow Children, 1934. This one, he played a, like a murderous person who was being sterilized. I don't, I did not watch the whole movie. I could not. So I don't know about all that. And uh, this really um, 
interesting title. Meet Boston Blackie in 1941. I don't know the context of that title, but it sounds horrible. <laughs> Not gonna watch the movie. So he went on and performed throughout all of these shows and in those few movies throughout his life. Very much enjoyed the circus life and and then at one point his guardianship was taken over by a man named George Surtees in 1935. So he was stayed with George and performed in the circus with George until George's death in 1965. So even though he enjoyed performing in the circus life, the daughter of George did not perform in the circus and did not understand how to properly care for uh, Slutsy, so she just committed him to a hospital in LA County. We're not gonna discuss her shortcomings. Um, that was rude though. <laughs> Whatever. So he did stay there for a few years until he happened to run into somebody that he knew. Ironically, he found a sword swallower. I guess a hospital's a good place for a sword swallower to work. Bill Frenchie Unks. Uh, so Unks helped him get out of the hospital and come back to the circus. So the hospital allowed the guardianship to be transferred from the hospital to the uh, boss of Mr. Unks, the sword swallower. So the boss was now the legal guardian and then he could continue to perform. Uh, so once he was uh, sprung from the hospital, he continued to perform until 1968. So at that point, he kind of slowed down on the performing side and would do things around town in LA County. He went to, he did go to Hawaii and London pretty often. He was pretty well known in those areas. Um, and he would do like sideshow stuff and just pretty much enjoying the rest of his days until his passing. Uh, he passed in September of 1971. His death certificate and his gravestone both read his most uh, his most well-known name is Slutsi Surtis. Uh, so that's who Pepper was based on and uh, as evidenced by all of the things that Slutsi went through, carnival workers were not always treated very well. Um, I am going to talk more about some of the other characters from Freak Show because they are very interesting to me and I just loved that. That was one of my favorite ones. Uh, so we're going to talk more about the American Horror Story uh, characters um, and maybe shed a little bit of light on how the carnival life was a double-edged sword, I'll say it was, it had its good points and definitely its bad points as well, um, but uh, one of the characters in Freak Show is an actual, he calls himself this, it's not me, his, he is an actual freak, I'm not calling him that, he calls himself that. Um, he plays Paul and he gave a little bit of an interview on their YouTube channel about what he's gone through and how much he embraces the, the freak uh, title. For me, now, after 15 years of exploring it, freak means a radically different person on stage entertaining with their radical difference. I cannot but help exploit my physique when I'm performing. I think what's interesting about me is my personality. Of course, this, these are different and they're interesting to look at and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm powerful and awesome and I have these and I'm a freak and I'm an actor and I'm a freak actor playing a freak and it's awesome. Um, so it's a double-edged sword there because some people would not necessarily want to be called a freak but other people embrace it because they enjoy their individuality and being different and, and that kind of thing so all we can do is uh, give them a platform to speak on what they like. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and start CPR on my like button. You know your girl needs some help. And go ahead and uh, shock my subscribe button with 200 joules. 
Uh, but in the event that you are not CPR certified, there is a link down below to the American Heart Association where you can find a place to become CPR certified. It only takes one afternoon and it's very important to saving someone's life. The faster you start CPR when someone is having a cardiac event, the faster they are going to come back to life. Um, and the, the less likely they are to have severe injuries or possibly death. Uh, so go ahead and click that link below if you are not certified, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.